Hi everyone, this is Paul from globaltradingsoftware.com. I wanted to do a quick technical trading analysis video. Um, a lot of people struggle with support and resistance zones. Uh, this is a trade that I've put together. It's not in yet on QFIN. It was an earnings trade with an expat algo signal just before earnings. Um, but my entry was above um, the major support and resistance zone because even though we had a, gr a, a decent earnings reaction the resistance zone was too much so it doesn't matter whether using the x brad algo and i'll put a link in into this description this video because it's a really great tool or you're using elliott wave or harmonics or any any other signal type um indicator you need basic chart craft guys um, you, you know it's it's this is basic stuff that everybody should be able to use before you even buy an indicator if you cannot do this on a chart you should not be trading because you need to understand the basic behavior of in this case it's a stock it could be uh, a futures contract it could be uh, Forex this is on the daily time team QFIN and I'm going to go through my thought process and why on this major support resistance zone why I've done that okay so uh, what I did was if I just play this back to this point here okay so just move that one more okay so the six star buy when the candle closed on the 11th of November was at this point here okay We've got earnings coming up uh, at, the, at that time on the 15th of November after the market. So I wanted a sensible entry strategy in case we had a big, massive reaction from earnings. So even though I've got a six star buy here and traditionally we'd say, you know, go in just above that signal candle. We've got earnings, so we don't want to go in before that. But also when we look left and I say it again, look left, we can see this pivot point here. This forms the bottom of a zone. This pivot point here as well, after we come down, we push back up, come back down again, the market didn't lie that, pushed it right down here. That forms the top end of the zone. Is that confirmed in other places? Absolutely, yes, just here. We've got a couple of attempts to go through this same point, this same price here. We've got a very strong zone defined. This stalled at this point here before it pushed back through. Look at this one here, I've not even put the ellipse there. We had the, the, the move here, uh, it really touched the bottom of that zone and then we gapped up and we came back down again. So we've got lots of points here, lots of points of confluence where we can say this zone is really, really strong. Okay, both top and bottom, that helps us define that zone. Now, entry wise we want to make sure we're above the highest point on this zone so this was this high was uh, 2851 okay so I want to make sure I'm a good percentage above that for my entry so I decided at 2869 uh, on the inner circle and uh, just bring the spreadsheet over now I'm not giving too much away right now uh, this was the uh, swing expert earnings this was the 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 thing to the inner circle on the daily time frame entry stop target okay these are the current open trades We're nearly a thousand percent profit times risk there so that really doesn't matter the main thing is that was the order then we play this forward that was the earnings reaction but look how this resistance zone held this is not witchcraft, it's not voodoo, uh, it's not magic. This is a zone of price where institutional traders have made decisions before and a lot of those decisions have been to sell. So, for example, behavior. Some institutional traders buy on the last earnings uh, run here and it moves up, comes back down to find support and it goes again. You get another earnings reaction we've got some good profit what they're going to do they're going to take the profit there's more if there's more sellers in the market at this price 
it's going to push it back down again. So we want to make sure if we're going long, we're going to make we're, we're clear of all of that. Let's play this all the way to the end now, and we can see the following day we had a bearish engulfing. So we had a lot of sellers. Okay, let me just go to that, and then the following day, uh, which was yesterday we had the lower low, lower high. So the sellers is going, now it may come back down, find a higher support and then go for it again. The order's still on, but I need to make sure it clears the danger first. Other support and resistance zones I've put on there is just to confirm some major support down here with this big, um, let's just zoom in a little bit here, this big rejection. Okay, when we look at this rejection, if I'm just going to turn the manager on a little bit for a second, because that will help me with the volume. Okay, so this rejection at this point was probably a 0.618 Fib retracement for the day, higher than average volume. Okay, so that was a big high volume rejection of those lows. Good point to have the top of your zone there. <laughs> we move further down. We're, sorry, to the left. We tested the bottom of the zone with this pivot point here. Okay, and again, when we pushed up here, we had a higher than average volume, but then higher than average volume down day, down day, down day. It really rejected that zone of price there, and then just recently, we've had a support then a gap up and then a move up so this is a good zone now again target wise so we're still not over yet this is where those recent highs have been which is good so we can form a zone with the top of that high where my cursor is here then the bottom of the high we've got one two three four five so just pull that down just a touch more to get that pivot here this one so this is a real sort of zone, it's like a cushion zone, if you like, price tries to push up, it tries to push up, it doesn't go, it doesn't want to come down, and then finally we get all that profit taking. That could happen again. So when we're working out our risk to reward, we've, we've framed our chart with these zones now. Uh, traditionally, we look for this support just before this six star buy, so that's a good stop loss. Remember, our rent is at 28.69. We want to make sure we clear that danger. So this is our risk reward. Use a Fib extension, and we've got a one. So if we risk one whole one to 1.75, you know, towards the bottom of that support zone, uh, support resistance zone there to the top, you know, around about 1.9. So that's a great risk to reward. So. We've got a sensible entry strategy using, um, you know, an earnings catalyst, which didn't happen for now. Uh, we've got uh, that entry above all of that, you know, a good percentage above all of these highs that tried to push through and failed. Uh, we've had the earnings reaction. We're now looking for support to hold and push through. If it does, we're in the long trade and we've got a great risk to reward. Hopefully this helps, guys. I will put the link for the XBRAC algorithm there because it's really good for stocks trading. Um, but again, you don't go long into resistance. You don't go short into support. Okay, So you've got to be very, very uh, astute. And one of the things you always do is look left, look at those uh, convergences of those uh, pivot points, draw those zones in that I've just talked about today, and put your entry strategy around those zones. Make sure you're not shorting into support or you're going long into resistance. Hopefully this helps and I'll speak to you all really soon.